G'day guys, welcome back once again to the True Footer YouTube channel for my weekly tips. It is now round four, the season is starting to fly through and it has to be said that round three was an actually horrid week for tipping. Now that I look at it, the best person, or the best performing person last round was Henstar. We only got six out of, I guess, eight. Six out of eight is not too bad. Obviously, we had a cancelled game, but they had six and the margin of 29. So, well done to Henstar123. The total winner is someone called Julian. I think that was the leader last time on 19 tips with a cumulative margin of 54. And Julian only got four tips right last week to retain top spot. That shows how hard it was to tip last week. As for me, I got four out of eight myself to be on 15 total tips. Richmond, I obviously got wrong. GWS, I got wrong. North Melbourne, I got wrong. And then Collingwood beat St. Kilda to restore some dignity. Geelong, got, I tipped wrong, of course. I think only like one or two people in the whole comp tipped that correctly. Brisbane beating West Coast was a sure thing. Gold Coast, Port Adelaide were both sure, not sure things, but pretty easy tips. Uh, and of course, the Essendon Melbourne game has been postponed. So once again, like last week, guys, I'm going to be looking at the Squiggle AFL Predictor for my tips just because I really like the visual aid of it showing the ladder. So if you look at the ladder now, it's crazy that Port Adelaide are the only truly... Uh, they're not the only undefeated team, but they're the only team not to have dropped points so far in 2020 at 244%. That is crazy. And we've got two winless teams down the bottom here in Fremantle and Adelaide. Uh, Collingwood a second, Gold Coast a third. I made a comment last week about how I didn't think even with a win they were going to get past 9 or 10th. Um, but I'm starting to change now just at how clinical they were against the Crows. Essendon still retains a top four spot and they have played one less game. That's crazy. Brisbane, North, Sydney, and Hawthorne make up the top eight. Richmond are in ninth. Smack bang in the middle of the competition in front of Geelong, St. Kilda, GWS, and Carlton. Melbourne, the Eagles are in the bottom four now. There's a lot of heavy hitters in that bottom 10. Or, yeah, bottom 10 between Richmond, Geelong, GWS, West Coast. Uh, those are four of maybe the top five or six contenders people would have said, and then I think the Bulldogs were considered to be an outside chance this year by some. So it's a fairly, fairly scrambled ladder to say the least so far. So we're going to kickstart the round looking at the Sydney Bulldogs game, and I hope to live stream this game on Thursday night with Bush. Um, this is a tough one. So Sydney obviously overcame North Melbourne in Melbourne last week. Very good performance, very good win for the context of their season. And similarly, at the same ground, the Bulldogs beat uh, the Giants to sort of kickstart their season. So both these teams have a little bit of momentum coming into this game. At the start of the season, I would have said the Bulldogs are the better team, but the SCG, the Swans can be hard to topple. I'm, I'm tempted to back in the Swans here. Um, this will be a devastating blow for the Bulldogs if they lost this game, but I'm liking what Sydney's producing so far. I'm going to say they win this by seven points in a thrilling contest. GWS and Collingwood, this is a potential grand final preview. I've used that phrase about a few games so far this year, but I do believe these two sides are a very good chance to play off in uh, October, November against each other. So this is in Sydney on current form. I've been talking up the pies I just think with the confidence they have at the moment, they'll be enough to beat the Giants, although, you know, nothing really would surprise me at this point. I'll say Collingwood by three goals. Oh, Port Adelaide and West Coast is a tough game to tip. So, look, form lines, Port Adelaide could not be playing much better and much further removed from the Eagles, who were, you know, playing shocking. I do have a little bit of hope that um, maybe some drier conditions will allow the Eagles to play more on their terms. Um... I don't know. The Eagles must be bereft of a lot of confidence, and Port Adelaide have pretty much passed every test with flying colours, although, to be fair, they've played some not particularly strong opponents so far this year. I'm dawdling because I don't really know which way I'm going to tip just yet. Um, oh, it would be very devastating for the Eagles to go 1-3 and three in the hub. Uh, I can hear the Port fans hating me already. I'm going to back in my boys, but I I don't know. This is just a biased tip. Come at me. I don't care. Go 10 points. St. Kilda, Richmond. And do I go another week without tipping the Saints? I mean, come on. This is a tough fixture, all right? Like, they've played Collingwood and, uh, and they've played Richmond. I'm going to back in the Tigers to make a statement after a poor week last week. 
that one could come back to bite me. Essendon versus Carlton. This game is a complete unknown. Um, I don't know who's going to be available for the Dons, and I can't make a call based on that. I think it would be really unfair if they play with too many players missing. Um, and the car- the Blues will be full of confidence. I'm going to say Essendon. I just think Essendon are a slightly better team. And it would be a very Carlton thing to beat Geelong at GMHBA and then not replicate it the next week. And, you know, I don't mean that too derogatory. To release, <laughs> I don't mean that too harshly. Uh, it's just that that's um, quite often a symptom of a young side getting a really good win and then not backing it up. So I'll, I'll say the Dons, but this one is really iffy. Gold Coast versus Fremantle. Reading the form lines, Gold Coast are flying and it's very hard to tip against them. Fremantle not playing too bad for an 0 3 team. Um, they have performed, I think, respectably. Um, against some tough opponents, particularly Brisbane, Essendon, and Port. You know, they're all reasonable sides, and they haven't disgraced themselves in any of those games. That being said, the the Gold Coast Suns will win this. They beat them last year, didn't they? I'll give them a four-goal win. Brisbane Lions at the Gabba uh, against Adelaide. The Lions obviously um, beat a fairly uncompetitive Eagles side. Maybe that's a bit harsh. The Eagles weren't. Super, super bad, but that second half, um, you know, it was clear. There was a clear dominant team. Contrast that with the Crows, who put in one of their worst performances maybe ever. Is that going too far? Tell me, Adelaide fans. How, is that, how does that loss compare to some of your previous losses that you can remember? It's uh, it's It's got to be close to a low, low point in their history. Uh, Brisbane are going to win this fairly comfortably. I'm going to give them a 45-point win. Melbourne versus Geelong. Now, Melbourne's form line didn't play in round three. Hard to read. Beat Carlton in a very unconvincing performance in round two. And that's pretty much the form we have to go off. Geelong to contrast, smash Hawthorne, and then got done by the Blues at home. I don't think the Cats will play two bad performances in a row. I'm going to back them in, particularly given Melbourne is a bit of a... uh, Well, at least the Cats are a bit of a bogey side for Melbourne. I'm going to say the Cats retain some dignity and win by about four or five goals. Hawthorne versus North Melbourne. This is a tough one. I could sense a North upset here. This is exactly the sort of game North would win just to ruin everyone's tipping. But with the confidence Hawthorne's in that midfield dynamic, then with Jago Romero coming back into the side, being one of the best midfielders, I think he was actually rated the best on ground uh, by the coaches for his return performances. uh, Performance, rather. Hawthorne's dynamic looks pretty good. I'm going to just go with my head and say Hawthorne win a gritty game by 18 points. And that is the end of the round, I think. Thank God I don't have to tip West Coast Richmond because that's only going one way at this stage. Uh, We'll have a look at the ladder. Collingwood and Port retain their spots as top two. In fact, the top three stays the same based on my estimations. Gold Coast 3-1, similar to last year. I can't see them going down in the same way that last year happened. You know, there's a lot of things going the way uh, for Gold Coast. Shorter season, shorter quarters, bit more experience and mature bodies on the list. I don't think they'll drop down too far. The other Queensland team is fourth. Would you have thought two years ago, at 2018, that Gold Coast and Brisbane would be in the top four early in 2020? Um, it really shows how far, or how much the game's transformed in the last few years. I know it's only early. Essendon, Hawthorne, Sydney, and Richmond make up the top eight. Um, and then Geelong sit in ninth ahead of North Melbourne. And West Coast regain some re- uh, credibility and uh, hope for their finals campaign, getting back to two and two. St. Kilda, GWS, Carlton, and Melbourne in the next four. And that bottom four really is starting to take shape with the Bulldogs, Fremantle, and Adelaide. Feel a bit bad for Fremantle. I think they are comfortably better than the Crows, who are in top uh, bottom spot. Fremantle fin- uh, in second last spot. I don't think that's particularly reflective of where they're at. And it won't be long before they start winning some games. But anyway, guys, those are my tips for round four. I would obviously, based on the form that I'm currently in, urge against you following those too closely for your own tips, but it is just a bit of a fun experiment to to input it into the system and see what ladder gets spat out. Let me know in the comments, as always, what you thought of my tips. I'm sure you won't be able to resist, um, and let me know what you think I got wrong or what I got right. Um, It's always nice to hear from you. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Take care of yourselves, and hope to see you on the live stream on Thursday. Cheers.